Okay, in this video demo, I'm going to show how we actually perform buffer overflow attack. This is my Windows 10 VM. I'm waiting for the VM to restart. Okay, we are ready. So let me show you the code. This is uh, the victim program. You can see here, this is uh, the C program. And uh, in the main function, we have a local buffer string. And then we copy the user provided argument into this buffer. And uh, so you can see here, if uh, the argument is longer than 64 bytes, okay, then buffer overflow may happen. Okay, so now let's see how we can actually utilize this vulnerability to make this program run our malicious code. And this is our malicious code, shell code. Actually, for this shell code, we just pop up the calculator. Okay, you can see here, so this is a, a shell code, right? And uh, so we are using 32-bit assembly and uh, this is a uh, section for the code. And uh, so our program will start from here. So here you can see, this is the first instruction here. So we XOR ECX, ECX, this becomes zero. Then we push ECX onto the stack. And uh, then actually these uh, two pushes are pushing this command. So this is a string onto the stack, okay? And uh, so then we move ESP to ECX. So yes, ECX will contain the address of uh, this uh, calc, calc dot ESE. So this will point to this uh, string. Then we push one onto the stack. Then we push ECX, then we move the address, this one, to move. What is this address? This is the address of WinEXC. However, every time when Windows starts, restarts, and this address will change, so we have to replace this address with the new address. So this is a demo. I'm hard coding the address of ESEC, WinEXC into this code. Then we call uh, EAX, and uh, then basically we're going to call when EXEC to run this calculator. And uh, here we want to actually exit cleanly, but the problem is that we found out the exit process, the address of the exit process has one now byte in the address. So this will cause problem when we form the malicious string. So I'm just uh, ignore this part of the code. So we don't need it to deploy this part of the code. I just want to show you, we can actually pop up a, a calculator. Okay, so now let me show you our Explore the code. So this is the Python explore the code. First, we import OS. Then we actually create an environment variable. This environment variable will contain the malicious string that will be fed into victim 3.c. The, I mean, of course, the executable. And uh, so let's look at uh, the structure of uh, the string. So first we have the LP slide, then we have this uh, malicious code, then we have another LP slide, and then we have this uh, mayor address, the address of uh, actually this uh, code. And uh, how can we get this uh, address? I will show you later. Then you can see here, 
we start a command shell. And then why we want to start a command shell, so within that command shell, we can use this environment variable because the newly created command shell will inherit all the create the environment variables in this code. Okay, so that's uh, the process. So let's first generate uh, the shell code. So this is uh, the assembling instruction. And uh, our code is in this folder. So all the code is here. So I'm going to do this. So now we have the object code. So I'm going to use go link link everything. Okay, pretty good. Now we have what? Now we have the ESE version of the shell code. So let me try and see if it works. Okay. Okay. Oh, I just remember I forgot to do something. You can see here, I didn't update uh, actually this uh, address, right? And uh, so because I restarted the Windows VM, I didn't update uh, this address, so you can see it doesn't work. So I had to change this. So let me get to the address of uh, WinESEC. Kernel 32, Win see okay so this is the new address right click copy and uh, good so let me compile again so first we do assembly then we actually do the go link good this time I think it should work Good. So you can see now our shell code can pop up uh, this uh, calculator. Now I'm going to put uh, the ESE file into Emulate Debugger to get the binary. So this is our binary here. Okay, let me copy the binary. Binary copy, good. Okay, so now where am I? Okay, here. Good. So now I'm going to do what? I'm going to actually change this into the Python format. And uh, so this is the hex decimal, right? And uh, so I need to do the replace to replace the space. Replace, replace, replace. Okay, good. So this is uh, our new shell code. I'm going to replace this one with this. Good. Okay, so we are ready to deploy the attack. And so let me come back to here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the Python attack and the Python export. Good, so we have the new environment. Uh, we have the, actually the new command shell. So let me show you what is inside test. So this actually contains our malicious string. Yeah, okay, so it's correct. Okay, and then I'm going to, f okay, so we need to compile actually this uh, C code, the victims program. Oh, sorry. Good, so now we should have this one, 
So LinkedIn three. Okay, so I'm going to feed the environment variable which contains our merge string into LinkedIn three, and we should actually uh, get to the calculator because um, the malicious string will cause buffer overflow, and then our malicious code will run and pop up a calculator. Good, so it works. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, how did I get actually this uh, address, right? And uh, so you can see, and uh, this address is uh, basically the mirror address. This mirror address will be used to, to overwrite the written address of a main function so that when the main function returns, then the code at this address will run. Actually, this will point to one of uh, this uh, NOP. Okay, and uh, so how can I get, get this? So luckily, the victim three here, we use a GCC to compile the program. And uh, for GCC, for Windows, everything is uh, predictable. And uh, so we will not use actually layout randomization for this uh, uh, GCC generated code. It's okay, and uh, so let's see here how can I determine uh, how can I determine where actually my Morris string will be fed into, right? So it's very easy to do this. So I can just actually do this. I can I can actually just uh, do this like that. Okay. Okay. Remove this. Remove this. Okay. And uh, so let's see here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually open victim three, and I give it a, a long argument. How I want to check where the buffer entry starts. I want to find out that the, where the buffer actually starts on the stack. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, good. And uh, so where are our main functions? I want to actually do a little bit of debugging. And uh, where is our main function? Okay, we can do this. Let me find that where is the main function. So you can see the main function starting at uh, four zero one five c zero one five c zero. Good. Okay, let me close this one. Okay, it's okay. One five c zero one five c one five c zero. Here. Okay, so I run this. Okay, because I give a long string, right? So the string copy happens here. So I'm going to run and stop here. Now you can see here. And uh, so this is uh, where the string buffer is located. It's located from here because we copy the AAA in this case to the buffer. So we know it's starting from here. Then when we actually feed this one into the victim three instead of AA, then we know, okay, I mean, uh, this monitor string will be copied to here, right? So the first, sequence of uh, bytes in a malicious stream will be nine zero. So I just chose actually six one FE nine four uh, as uh, the malicious code address. So you can see here six one FE nine four 
as the, the malicious code address, which will land on the second byte of, uh, no, not the second byte, the fifth byte of this sequence of uh, nine zero. So that's how I actually chose this one. Okay, so this is uh, basically uh, how we can perform buffer overflow attack, the basic principle.